Well, howdy, y'all. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Welcome aboard. So I'm building off-grid, and I'm building a house that'll last a thousand years. And one way that'll last a thousand years is I'm logging my own cedar. So uh, to get a thousand-year house, I'm working with cedars. But I do still got to sawmill it a little bit. So what you see behind me is the beginning of a sawmill. And I have a big Oscar Pro 336 that I picked up. Uh, and uh, so I'm building a sawmill shed, and I used a ridge pole out of one of these cedars I've just talked about. And right now I'm framing in rafters. Uh, today is a Monday after work. I've got a regular day job, and then in the evening I can work. And Friday I've got tornadic winds. So I probably won't tin this thing this time around. <laughs> I'll let the winds blow through because I've already had big winds a couple of times. But when I originally designed this thing, I designed it to fit the sawmill, which that's 24 foot. The sawmill itself is 20, so I had an extra four foot of work around it. When I got done, you see that that ridge pole goes all the way out here, and that gives me an opportunity to put a little bit of space in here where I could park implements, farm implements, and whatnot down below. So uh, custom building when it's your own money, it doesn't cost you a lot to add on. Now, if you're, you know, if I was doing this in a subdivision, that'd be, you know, a $20,000 add on, even if they accepted it. But for me, it's a little thing. But um, I've got to go ahead and build it and put it up. I've got to be done by Friday with uh, everything. The uh, dog, uh, I'm going to put dog houses around both ends for stability's sake. I'm going to open it up down the middle so that I could bring a log in without any post in the way. Uh, I got a lot to get done before Friday. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these rafters up. Uh, it's a fairly consistent and an excellent way we've done it. So what I've done is I've taken a 12-foot uh, rafter, marked the six-foot point, and bolted it in. So I'm out of these brackets. I'm out of these brackets right here. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and use any old square bracket I have temporarily. I've ordered these already. They should be here before Friday. Um, but uh, So there's my ridge pole. It's not going anywhere. And then once I had this up... On both ends, I went ahead and uh, Stacy and Anthony did all this work, but uh, with the idea, they boxed it all in in eight foot sections, and then all the rafters went in, boom, 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 equal distance, and then we did the cross pieces on top. They're under a little bit of tension, and it turns out to be a pretty good design. So now I have to finish this up this way. Uh, and I've decided that the easiest thing for me to do would be to continue the box. So I'll go ahead and grab that. I'll put an end piece there. And then I'll, I've, uh, this is more than 10, uh, 8 foot. This is closer to 10 foot. So I bought some 12 foots that I'll put in here. I'll box them in and then I can make these right. Right now they're just to hang in there on one screw. But, um, and they're, I'm finding it really hard to, to work per unit. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you on stop motion so you can watch me do that. But I do like custom building and you can take advantage of things like this that come up. So let me go ahead and start doing some measurements and doing some cuts and uh, uh, the whole deal here will be go ahead and close this out. One weird thing that I did and I don't know if it'll work or not. I'm actually using live trees in a construction, all right, to build a sawmill house. I notice I haven't cut them trees out. I'm going to thin them with the idea I could take enough of the wind shear out that hopefully it won't shake this dog. Uh, you know, this uh, <laughs> this is a silly thing I'm doing. Uh, but worst case scenario, I could cut them off. Right, but I'm gonna try because it's super hot in Texas. I'm gonna try to keep those trees alive, alive, and lock them in so that the tops will wave around, but the bottom part holding the, uh, you know, the sawmill doesn't move. So just the top will move. We'll, we'll see. Uh, worst case scenario, I'll, I'll cut them off if it starts shaking things loose. Uh, again, I'm building with my own money, so it's not bank money here. I could do a little bit of. Stuff you know, experimenting. I've always wondered if I could build around a live tree and I am indeed doing that with that. So if you're interested, can you build with a live tree? Listen, I've done a lot of things in life and people to, oh, you can't do that. And 25 years later, <laughs> it's just fine. So I don't know what they mean when you can't do that. It means they've never seen it, but uh, I haven't seen this. I'm going to try it. 
Uh, you do you, right? You follow the codes in your area. If you're spending somebody else's money to build, build right and don't do experimental stuff. I'm okay doing it. <laughs> All right, let me get going. Well, I use those aluminum extension ladders as a brace. They're, I want to put weight on them, but I'm using them exactly for what they're good, leftover good for, and that's to hold up these rafters. And then you'll see that I'll grab a level and I pick one rafter and I level it out and uh, one on the end, on each end, and then I can run a fascia board across it, and that gives me the straight line. See the wind blowing the other rafter around? So, uh, you know, how do I, each rafter, if I did them uniquely, I'd end up with all kinds of uh, curvature. But there you go. I, I've got a one end all stabilized, and now the other end, and I'll put that fascia plate up, and then all those rafters will tuck in there. And I'll take a tape measure and I'll mark, mark two foot on centers and uh, put uh, the rafters in exactly where they belong. And um, it really stabilizes this uh, design. So I use the ridge pole as a, as a timber, right? A, a raw timber. And that's a, not a dimensional uh, material. That has a lot of different, the limbs give it a different volume. The taper gives it a different volume. But by uh, building like this, I'm able to um, make a line and um, if I end up with a little bit of curve and it's not too bad, I can rip some big, long 20-foot cedar and uh, cover the fascia board and just adjust it so that it looks straighter than it is. Um, I want to build a house like this, but, you know, an outbuilding for a sawmill, this thing's getting, uh, uh, it's quaint. <laughs> and I really like it. So once I have the, uh, the uh, bottom truss on, then I could go back in. You'll see I'm putting in the top pieces. I cross them over, uh, lag bolt them all in, and boy, does it draw tight. I'm watching in the video while I narrate this, the wind in the trees, and I don't see the building moving much, and I haven't even thinned the top part. So I think my idea of being able to build around a living tree is going to be safe and fine for this particular construction. The rafter system is going to strengthen the bottom, plus the uh, you know, the walls that I'll put around the uh, sides, that'll work too. Well, I'm pretty happy with my evening's work. I got about 50, 45 minutes worth of sun left. It's daylight saving, so I picked up some. All right, so let's talk here for a quick second. So you saw how I uh, boxed that in, and normally they are eight foot sections. I wish I would have done one thing different. I wish I would have staggered they're eight foot exactly on both ends, but I wish I would have bought eight foot and 10 foots and staggered them so I wouldn't have two joints halfway through one joist, if that makes sense. In other words, it would have overlapped. I'm so interested in changing that, I might <laughs> uh, pry up some of the middle ones and put in a 20 footer or something different, right? I see there's a little wave uh, as you go down that I'm gonna take out. Now, this is open suspended it's a suspended over that pole now i know that pole deflects four inches so if i don't put anything in the middle at all i'm going to have this weird four inch looking sway back roof i don't want that uh, that doesn't look too bad i mean it really doesn't i didn't pull lines i didn't run a level so i'm, I'm real pleased the last part here um, the two by fours that I need for that are there. I'm going to see with the rest of the evening if I can scare up some uh, seven foot logs uh, that I can. I've got some around here that'll fit in there, and I'll pull those out, finish that up. You see the, right there how I'm holding the uh, last few uh, trusses in, right? I just put a little two by four on there, and I'm holding it that way. Uh, that worked just fine. Uh, also boxing it in and putting them in worked just fine. Uh, but I'm missing the two by fours up here, and I don't have, if you notice, I don't have any more of the, the posts. So I'll do something with that. I'll run a ridge post off of that or something. But let me get these last few screws in here and uh, then see if I can find some uh, supports and uh, put that in there. And then I have some bracing wherever I have a little sway back where the, uh, like I said, all those eight foot pieces line up perfectly on both sides and made a little weak spot, you know. I could see it more than you can in the camera. The other side really has one. Anyway, uh, I, I might stagger those, but also that's where I'm gonna put the support post. And one of them, now that I went real long, I could make one of them, uh, you know, an eight foot dog house. So I can actually close the uh, sawmill in an eight foot dog house, maybe. I don't, we'll see. <laughs> 
I, we'll see. I'm, I get custom building. I can do whatever I want and take advantage of the lay of the land. That doesn't look too bad. Uh, I don't know as the tree sways in the breeze if the whole building's going to rip itself to pieces. That's why I'll thin that out. And in worst case, I'll just cut it off and cap it. You know, I'd rather have the building than I've got plenty of pine, plenty of cedar. I could cut those. Anyway, uh, let me go ahead and put these last few screws in there. Real place with the day's work. Uh, and uh, we'll go ahead and finish this up uh, strong. Uh, I'm liking it. You can see that I'm liking it. All right, I'm taking advantage of the calm because <laughs> in a few days I'll have a, a big win. So, uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, five and a core, uh, five and a half inch lag bolts, and I'm driving them through the uh, the rafters. Now that I've bolted them together, and I've also attached them on the end. So as I draw them up, it's stiffening this entire ridge. So uh, what I don't want this thing to do is blow away in high winds, and uh, so more the better, right? And then I went and bought a worm gear saw and I'll come in and I'll draw the lines on these and then I'll cut these so that when I put the tin on them I won't have these stubs sticking out. Uh, and uh, the reason why I didn't cut them all on the ground is, uh, you know, a timber has a taper. Down there on that end it's 14 inches around, maybe even 18 inches around. Down here it's 6 inches around. So I had this taper. So, but I wanted the same distance for the rafters off the ground. About seven foot is what I needed. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep a low profile. I'll have the dog, uh, dog houses on the end of this sawmill to stiffen it. Um, but uh, everything I do here, I've got to make sure this thing stays, doesn't blow away. And if by chance I think these, you know, 6,000, 10,000 pound lag bolts aren't enough, <laughs> I'll go back through and I'll drive one into each rafter. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm doing okay here. And this isn't a living, right? I'm not living in here. It's housing a sawmill. So, uh, you know, it's open faced and built of timber. So. But when I build the roof over the house, I want to understand how timbers deflect and how they work, how to stiffen them. Uh, you know, the Da Vinci uh, bridge, I built one of those. It, it, I put 2,000 pounds on twigs that were that big, and I was truly amazed. 2,500 total pounds. It didn't flex at all, and now that I've got it wrapped in concrete, it won't. So I am understanding how this works, right? It's a good exercise. Feels good all the way down. I've got the one where the camera is, so you're the last one. And then uh, the end, uh, once I get the cedar post, oh, I found some, let me show you those. All right, there's, I found some crazy cedar logs. Look at that one, it's spiraled and then it connects there. I like that. So I'm gonna use that. So there'll be one here, one there. That one's much bigger than seven foot. So I will put them in the ground with, uh, I've got some concrete there. So there will be a couple holding this section. There'll be a couple on that. I might put uh, barn doors there on a glide so I can open it up and put saws and equipment and oil and whatnot here. 
uh, down on this end, it's already pretty stiff because of the, uh, the, the cedars in the ground, right? Which I might end up, um, you know, but this end over here has a little, oh, it has a little bounce where wind might be able to get underneath it. So I'll, uh, you know, stiffen this one. And uh, uh, I don't, I think I might leave these ends open and just do a, a dog house this way and that way. I'm not sure. Uh, but that end, I know I'll have it closed off uh, because I want to shelter the sawmill, which is over there. All right. So, uh, all right. So you saw me go ahead and uh, see how I'm stiffing that with the lag bolts through the top joists. Uh, the rafters, uh, this is getting much straighter as you eyeball it. Little two by fours in there. Those cedar posts aren't doing anything there. I just leaned them up in there. Uh, I'm gonna say that that's 90% open air. Lucky here, I can walk around in here. I've got uh, four uh, two by four supports and I'm hoping I beat them high winds. We'll find out this Friday. <laughs> but uh, I should have the tin up. I should, well, I think I'll skip the tin if there's high winds coming. But I st should have the sidewalls in, the stiffen, everything uh, right here where the, the eight foot two by fours overlap. I'm gonna go ahead, I've got some old bed rails and I'm gonna drill those bed rails out. And uh, so I'll stiffen those with, uh, and they're the old fashioned ones that are super hard and real hard to work with. Anyway, so I'll stiffen all these joints with uh, bed rails. Whenever I go to a thrift store or a salvage yard or a uh, estate sale and I see those old uh, angled uh, bed rails, and they're hard. And I get them and I use them for stuff like this. I also use them for the nose of stair treads, right? Because <laughs> it'll never wear out, never splinter. So anyway, found materials, salvage materials. This is not all salvage materials, but a lot of these fasteners uh, I did buy at estate sales. When I see an old guy with a whole shelf full of fasteners, uh, say, oh, I'll give you $200 for that. Less than one box of screws is $26. So you can really, really clean up. Anyway, uh, I've got uh, roughly $600 of dimensional um, weather. Um, and of course I can't treat my own timber, but um, anyway, uh, that's ground contact um, two by fours that I have up in there. I have a cedar ridge pole. Um, anyway, I'll get this all straightened around. This thing will last a long time. Not a thousand years, but a long time. But uh, It'll last uh, longer than me. And uh, the next person can straighten out the little barn and uh, get it going. But uh, pretty happy overall. And uh, I, I want to uh, ask you to like, subscribe, follow me along. If watching some guy build off-grid all by his lonesome uh, is your thing, then I'm your kind of dude. So give me a like, subscribe, and follow along. Bye.